Nick's secret passion has always been bumper stickers. Fearing the looks he might get from his friends and co-workers, Nick's never actually worn the bumper stickers. He just buys them and hides them in his trunk. Then one day, he stumbled upon Lizzie's curio shop. Her bumper stickers were so hilarious, Nick decided it was time to let it all hang out. Now Nick drives down the road covered bumper to bumper in stickers, and he's never felt so free. TJ Hummer comes from a long line of military vehicles, but growing up in the gated communities and private schools of Bloomfield Hills, Michigan, TJ's idea of off-roading was going over potholes on Woodward Avenue. An aspiring rapper, TJ likes looking tough without scratching his paint or getting dirt in his rims. But that all changed when his father signed him up at Sarge's Boot Camp for urban SUVs. Murphy never feels like he fits in. Relationships are hard for him, and everyone expects him to be the tough guy, Mr. Muscle. But Murphy's shy. He likes to stay put and prefers the familiar smooth roads of his old neighborhood. When his best friend invited him to the top destination spa in the country, Murphy reluctantly agreed. Some spa? Until that day, Murphy thought Off-Road was the name of a country band. If anyone needs a little off-road training, it's Frank Pinky Pinkerton. Working the last 20 years as an art gallery assistant in Las Vegas, he's never laid tread outside the pristine showroom. But when he fell in love with a tough, nature-loving Yugo performance artist from Eastern Europe, she made one thing clear. She wasn't taking any tender, tired American SUV back to Belgrade with her. It was her way, or no highway at all. Buzz Light Car has crash-landed in a place called Andy's Garage. Desperate to reunite with the rest of his space rangers, he enlists help from the native vehicles of this strange planet. But before he can get his ship fixed, Buzz is confronted with a shocking realization that he may not be the space ranger lunar rover he thought he was, but rather nothing more than a toy space car. Woody may have been pushing the miles and a little over his warranty, but he was still the favorite in Andy's garage. Until one day the new model rolled off the assembly line, a high-tech, low-IQ, oil-slick named Buzz Light car. Suddenly Buzz has a prime parking spot in Andy's garage and Woody's parked on the street. Benny Caliper loves movies. He goes to the theater every chance he gets, and he loves the way a good story can take you away from the day-to-day -day troubles of your life. He's currently working on his first original screenplay about a cop car that's forced to partner up with an inner city garbage truck, and it's called Trash Talkin' Cop. Sully is the top scare at Monster Trucks Incorporated. He's looked up to by all the other trucks in the scare garage because he's the biggest, baddest, bluest thing on four gigantic wheels. But deep down inside, he's as gentle as a hybrid. Flick is a bug that takes the road less travel. He's never quite fit into the convoy of bugs he rides with because he's an individualist, an inventor, and in big trouble when the convoy finds out the warrior vehicles he hired to save them are actually circus cars. Circus promoter P.T. Flea has spent his life motoring around backyards, literally looking under every rock to find the next big act, like the flying Winnebago brothers and their unbreakable trampoline, or the screaming wheelies, whose tires squealed so loudly every headlight in the audience was shattered, and he's still paying off the insurance bill on that one. This 1960s VW bug, also known as Varuma roundus bugus, is usually indigenous to warm, dry climates. Though they have a relatively short lifespan, their miles to the gallon are quite low. It's also worth noting that they can haul up to four times their own body weight. Pretty strong for such a small bug. P.T. Flea's tireless troop of circus cars might look like some small-time act, but these guys will knock your brake pads off. They've traveled from Hartford to Hayward performing their death-defying, flaming exhaust pipe jumps and harrowing stunt driving with true professional flair. Chuck Manifold started off in the news world as Barry Pippinloo, but when he started covering the race scene, he knew he needed a name better suited for the tough nature of the racing world. As soon as he started reporting as Chuck Manifold, his career took off faster than a drag racer at a green light. Endless days on the road and sleepless nights crisscrossing the country? For some, this life would quickly grow old. But not Mac, no sir. 
Mac knows how important his role is. He's driving Lightning McQueen, the world's fastest race car. He's part of a team, and everybody knows there's no I in team. Just like there's no I in Mac. If Mac is one thing, he's loyal. And when his boss Lightning McQueen needs help, he'll help. Even if it means slapping two gas can rigs on and turning himself into a one-man pit crew. Jerry's a pretty easy-going guy. Nothing makes him happier than running routes on the open road, no one to report to, no need to wash, it's the best. There's only one thing that can set him in a bad mood, and that's being mistaken for a Mack truck. After all, he's a Peterbilt, and proud of it. <laughs>